Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to walk through how to upload multiple listings eBay in one shot. And we'll be focusing on the built-in listing tool within eBay that allows you to list multiple items. This is not talking about the .csv comma separated value file upload. I do have several other videos going through that and that is arguably more powerful and allows for more customization. But today's video is about this multiple listing tool on your eBay seller hub. So as you can see, I'm on the listings tab here. And when I click create listing, you'll see single listing first. This is probably the most common way that people list items for sale on eBay. But if you're looking through uh, or looking to put in more than one item at a time, this might be a better use of your time to do it this way as opposed to one single item at a time. And I guess a quick comment I should mention is there, there's another way that people will consider doing that is not using this multiple listing tool. So I just want to tease that to you. Maybe I'll make another video on that, but uh, one common way to save time for items with similar characteristics is to simply use templates. And so you can modify templates, you can create templates. You can see I have quite a few saved here that are for certain types of, in my case, sports trading cards, where I can pick one of these templates and I can then list a single card that has a lot of those characteristics already built in. And so this is another good way to do it. But I'm going to walk through this one today. Uh, he, here's a couple reasons why you would want to do this instead of the .csv upload. And as a disclaimer, I use a CSV import for all my listings 99.99% uh, .99 of the time. That is my personal primary way to do it. The reason for that is that I'm very familiar with it. I know the ins and outs of the .csv comma separated value upload. Uh, and so that makes sense to me. So I'm going to do what makes sense to me. But it's a little bit more technically advanced than this built-in eBay seller tool. And this is free, uh, of course, unless you're creating listings that have fees attached to them. But if you haven't seen this, check out my other videos. But this is a lot more powerful. Uh, the downside is it takes a lot more technical nuance to get it right so that eBay can take in basically an Excel spreadsheet and just put all of those things onto your store. So that's my disclaimer. I do this for most of the time if you're interested. A lot of help pages as well as some other videos on my channels and others to walk through that. But the reason you'd use this is if you want to make sure that you're creating something that eBay will accept because they're providing these input fields. So you really won't have an error with anything like category, which usually has a clever, unique identification number with it, or your shipping policies or something else. So that would be one reason to use this create multiple listings tool is just to minimize the error potential of your upload. And then the second reason, maybe not a reason you'd use this, but a, a byproduct of when it makes sense, is when you have lots of items with similar categories. You can imagine if I'm listing 100 different items and I got to fill in all of these darn fields, that's going to take me some time. And yeah, it's going to be error-free and eBay will accept it and they'll go to my store, but it will take some time. And so it's generally recommended that you want to leverage this bulk edit tool. And for all of these types of fields, these pieces of information, the more that your items have in common with one another, the more useful this tool is going to be. And so for my example, I picked five sports trading cards, baseball cards from the same set, from the same year, from the same team that will make it really straightforward to bulk edit five things at once and then submit these and get them posted to my store. And so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, I have this blank listing. It defaults to my most used category here. So I did not 
choose this before this video started. When I click the button, this is what my item category defaults to. And because I know I'm listing five things, I'm actually going to put in four copies, which should yield five total items, the five cards that I want to list to my store. So boom, five things almost ready to go. And so for bulk edit, these are where I'm going to put in my information that is common to all five of these. And so I just know I'm going to price all of these very, very low. We're going to say a dollar 59 US dollars. And that's going to go, as you can now see, to all of my listings. I always like turning offers on. This is just something in case people want to uh, submit lower offers on multiple items. There, that's a benefit to me as a seller. So I always turn that on. And then uh, shipping policy, I'm really just walking down the list here, but uh, I, I talk in another video about how important it is to set up your shipping, your payment, and your return policies. And I am going to choose the old faithful policies uh, that I use for pretty much all of my listings here. So in my other video, I talk about this, but you need to talk about or uh, to set these up on your store profile. And I have a walkthrough on how to do this. Uh, but if you haven't seen it before, this is something you're going to have to set up on another page. So good. I have a price. I have uh, all my policies. And at this point, I'm going to start filling in some more specific details about these five trading cards. So these, these categories here are all specific to that top level category, uh, sports trading cards, singles. So selling one card instead of lots. And these that I'm picking are what are applicable to every single, uh, card in this batch. So compared to listing these one by one, it's saving me time because I can simply enter the information once and have that applied to uh, multiple things. And these are pretty straightforward, simple cards. Uh, probably going to take a while to sell, but using this for demonstration purposes, and they will actually go live to my store. One other feature of this thing is you get to see what the most common entries are to eBay for these different categories. And so I'll see a lot of people, they'll use their own upload, upload tools and maybe they uh, will, you know, have something different than what eBay expects. And, and this is actually pretty bad. Uh, so this, this might be a flaw in eBay, but Major League MLB makes no sense. It's, it's Major League Baseball is, is really what the league is. So that's kind of funny. Uh, and uh, maybe another reason why I'm not the biggest fan of some of eBay's terminology. But uh, you can see here, in most cases, you want to know, is it yes or no? That way you're not putting in some nonsense uh, to your listing if you're not using something like this. I always put baseball card as the value. This is free form, so I, I think it helps the search engine optimization, the algorithm, if you type in something that isn't in your title, maybe isn't in your other card features, but still might get uh, some people searching for that term baseball card. So that's enough for now. And you can kind of see the uh, the dealio there. So we're almost there, but I still need the specifics for what is unique to these individual things. And so when I click this edit button, this takes me to that single listing. And this is where you're going to have to put in your uh, specific information about that item. And so off screen, I'm looking here at these cards. I'm flipping them over. And I'm typing the information about the first card in my stack. The other thing you'll need to consider off screen is that you need to have a way to get your photos tied to 
this listing. So there are a few ways to do it. You can add photos and you can drag and drop from your file explorer on your local device, what you're using. If you click this button, it will actually send a prompt to your smartphone where you can then take pictures and tie them directly to this listing, which is pretty cool. Or you can upload photos from the web if you have a publicly accessible URL. Now, I have already taken the liberty of scanning this these cards, and they are saved. Uh, they are saved locally. So uh, you probably won't see it here, but I'm actually going to select the two photos that I scanned in from my local laptop, and you can see them pop in here. I also have a project associated with these. Um, the, this is something I could have applied to all four or all five of them. Uh, and so in that case, um, I could have used the bulk edit. And then the other nice thing about these eBay things is it can kind of infer some of these characteristics after you've put in, say, a title. And so it knows that this player is Octavio Dotel just because I typed it into the title here. So this is still slow, in my opinion. As you can see, the, it's slower, I should say, than what I normally do. And so when I'm doing this with my bulk upload template, I already have a description baked in for every single card, uh, and it, it's a lot faster than this. Uh, and I actually have a uh, text file, so I can go ahead and put that in, show all options. Let's see if it likes my uh, HTML that I copied and pasted. It may not, uh, and I don't really care, but uh, this is meant to be HTML. So there we go. That is one single item, um, and you can see it takes a bit to save. So that one looking pretty good for the sake of time. I'm actually going to uh, just cut three of these. And that's the other nice thing here is say you want to do stuff later, you could save for later down here, or you can just uh, remove these listings. And um, I just removed three. I'm down to one. At this point, I'll enter that single card view. And I'll do this exercise just one more time here. Another uh, weakness I'll say this thing is kind of loading um, is if you're Uploading things from offline, most things do not have an 80-character text enforcement uh, on them. And so this will tell you down here how many characters you have left. But if you're doing this on offline on a, uh, a CSV file or something, you're, you're going to have to build in that logic to tell you if your title is over that 80 character limit. Otherwise, when you try to upload, you're going to see an error. And those errors are hard to decode sometimes. Uh, so if, if you haven't done it successfully before, that would be, once again, another reason why you might consider using this style of upload as opposed to something a little bit more technically rigorous. I should comment, um, this is an underused field, this custom label, the SKU field. I see a lot of people put something like inventory management, like where it's stored in their garage or in their office, in the title, and you're just wasting real estate at that point. This field doesn't show up to buyers. You can even click this information uh, banner, and they, they recommend it for basically tracking and it's up to you how you do it. So I put a project name and then a, the date that I actually purchased these. And then I run a bunch of analysis after the fact uh, where I can, uh, you know, see how I'm doing on specific progress. Mitchell Boggs, poor Mitchell Boggs. This guy doesn't even have a uh, common entry here in the eBay input form. So there we go. This is less information than I would normally put in. Heck, I don't even have a description, but uh, I can always edit that after the fact. 
but when I click done, I got my two items. Everything's looking good, namely the price, namely the offers, the policies. You can see 11 completed, uh, and, and I'm ready to rock. I got my pictures tied in. So I'm just going to click Submit, knowing this is a little less quality than normally, normal, uh, but it's hopefully uh, something that you're <laughs> – look at this. Uh, hopefully it tells you – ways that this might help your business. And this is one of them that will help a lot of people. So I got real lazy there. I didn't put in some specific information. And you can see here, it clearly flags what I'm missing. Clearly flags. It. And if you're doing stuff offline, you may not see that yourself. And so uh, I can see this little red banner here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and copy that HTML description that I have saved. I'm going to click Save and Close, and then boom, one of those errors goes away. And then uh, Card Condition, this is also on my second one. I got lazy, and I didn't fill in that required field. So uh, boom, it tells me very clearly what I am missing. All right, um, so in that case, oh, this may have been the button I was looking for. I think that's good, so look at that. Hey, I got my italics, I got my bold, I got my bullet points. So that's another nice benefit of walking through this one more time. All right, uh, looks like I'm on the last error, and um, I, I hope this is helpful for the video. Of course, you're probably not going to be too compelled by time savings, seeing me uh, get lazy, miss a bunch of stuff, but the point remains, if you want to list a bunch of things, this is probably going to be faster for you than it is listing one by one or by using templates if you're listing a lot of things that have... Uh, similar characteristics with them. So uh, that is nice. And then your errors are, are going to be fine. They are not going to fail and you're not going to be able to have any trouble looking at all these crazy codes and technical jargon that may not match your uh, knowledge, may not be something you've seen before. And um, so there we go. These two things are live right now. I can fact check it right away. I don't have to do any more troubleshooting. You can see here, here's my first one, Octavio, Do Octavio Dotel, World Series champion, I should add. It has my policies applied, and it has that information that I just put in, as well as this HTML description, which is also a little bit more than the scope of this video, but might be a good idea for you just to use HTML converter to turn plain text into something a little bit more organized a little bit prettier, we'll say, uh, so that you can just simply paste that into your descriptions as HTML. So hope you found that helpful. Would love to hear your comments. I particularly do not use this tool all that much myself, but you may have tips and tricks that make this even more valuable than what I showed with the uh, multiple items with common characteristics. So I would love to learn from you if that is the case. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll catch you at the next one. See ya. <clears throat>